Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Faith Film Festival. I'm your host, Lorena Jorge, and you know what I do. I'm here to bring you some inspiring, positive films. And this episode is no different, because today we have a documentary called Same World, Same Chance, which is coming to us from a whole other continent, Africa. This film is about a group of volunteers that went to Africa determined to make a difference. Let's watch this film by Jonathan Ism. Yeah, yeah, no way. As North Americans, we get this totally wrong perception of how life is actually here. All we, all we do is build fear. But you come here, and especially Zambia, there's so much peace in this place. And it's, unless you come here and you live with the people and you walk into town and you go into the villages, then you won't ever realize that. You'll just believe that that the war and the poverty has taken over the lives of people. But you talk to anyone here and they're happy. Yeah, and they feel bueno. Yeah, it's good. Well, I changed a little. Oh, a couple of years ago, I started reading about Africa and about AIDS, uh. war, corruption, everything, everything horrible about Africa. So I felt this need to come figure it out for myself what was going on. When we got to Faith Orphanage Foundation in Kitwe, uh, we had told the director Faith Liena that we wanted to be in rural Zambia doing anything, building projects or teaching anything. And she told us about this place called Kibambmeni. Two days later, we're in a village in the middle of nowhere with no electricity or running water. Far from any city buildings and crowds, they immersed themselves into a foreign world. They would quickly learn to love the lifestyle and the people. The kids, everyone, they just want to learn. You, we would teach them English, we'd teach them life skills. You'd leave the classroom and they'd follow you to your house and just want to learn more. They just wanted to learn anything. They wanted to suck any information, education out of you they could. And yeah, there's just so much love there. It's contagious. So at 15 years or any age, they have nowhere to go because most of the families can't afford education in the closest city, which is Sowezi, and that's about 50 kilometers away. So we decided that uh, we wanted to help fund a high school. This is Kibombo Mene Basic School. English prevails as the official language of Zambia, where there are up to 73 local languages spoken. Zambia's rural school system faces major challenges, including a lack of teachers and little or no monitoring of the classrooms where some teachers are using the local languages. When students take on the defining grade 9 exam, which is in English, many of them cannot even read the questions. These kids, you'll find 15, 16 year old kids who are in grade 7 and they're reading at the level of a grade one or grade two. Maybe not even quite that good. So they want, they want to learn so badly. But where, where do you start? An 11 year old brings me his homework, three simple questions. And he's just, I know he's just copied from the board. He's just copied it. He doesn't know what it says. So to start to help him with three simple questions of homework, it could take two hours, really, because, or even more than that, because you have to start back so far. And it's sad, because you ask them what they want to do. What do you want to do when you grow up? They'll say a doctor, a pilot, a teacher, but they're not going to have that chance if education keeps going at the same, same level that it's going now. 
shocked at the shortfalls of the education system in the area and infected with the warm and loving personalities of the people, Kim Hurley returned to Canada for studies in late March 2008. Shortly after, Kim and Marissa formed Same World, Same Chance. The two began working together from continent to continent on everything from bank accounts to fundraising events and conducting countless meetings, all towards the designing and building of a brand new high school. We're not just another big organization, we're just two girls, you know, we've been there, we want to make something happen, so we want it to be a school for these people, not a Canadian school, it's going to be a Zambian school, and I think that that really reaches people more than just another company sending you know a letter in the mail saying donate money. As far as labor is concerned I only want to hire locally so this school is for these people not the ones from the city so they're going to be the ones making the bricks building the, the classroom blocks everything I have my life to dedicate to this project so if the money comes within a few years for the entire project great if it doesn't I'm going to see, see to it that it comes. So if it takes five, ten years, then I will be here until this school is built. Because, because they deserve it. They deserve it here. Here in Kiwombomene we call her Maparo. It's a common name which everyone knows. But in Canada they call, they call her Marisa. Uh, I think everyone is happy with the, her plans that which is bring to build the the high school starting from grade 8 to grade 12. I think also everyone here starting from even the chief, everyone here, even the government, they are welcome with that uh, decision. In the task of acquiring the land to build the school, the next step was to visit Chief Kaliale, head of the local Lamba tribe. Not only would the land cost money, but the project would require his approval and full blessing. With ten children of his own, the chief was delighted to hear the proposal. Encouraged by Marissa's determination and enthusiasm, the chief would sell her 100 hectares of land for 200,000 Zambian kawacha, the equivalent of about 60 Canadian dollars. They want development in this region. It, it gives jobs. Uh, we're going to have a health clinic, a trade school, um, and a, a restaurant with some small shops where people can sell crafts or uh, food from their farms. So it, he wants this as much as, as much as we do, he wants this. Marissa and Faith immediately hired four of the local villagers to begin construction at the new school site. The project includes uh, two student dormitories, staff housing, uh, classroom blocks for 12 classrooms, a restaurant, an auditorium, um, an office block, an administration block, a large-scale farm for income generating, and a health clinic, a trade school, which will include carpentry, tailoring, and we also want to teach uh, culinary as a, as a trade. The auditorium. Yeah, the, yeah the that looks blocks. nice. Yeah, the school blocks that side. We want to grow a, a plant called Jatropa, which is commonly grown in, in this part of Africa. And Jatropa can be used as a biodiesel. So the idea is to grow Jatropa in a large amount and sell to potentially the local mines, which they will convert themselves into biodiesel and use. So there's income generating projects in the works. With Emmanuel being the mayor, yes. he can, he can uh, recommend who you must see at... Uh, Meetings continue and proposals yes. for funding are submitted and reviewed. When the school is built, they will have up to 50 staff, including farmers, administration and teachers. With her degree in physical and health education, Marissa imagines having a role combining supervision of the school and teaching. So many of the students will be from, will be orphans or come from vulnerable homes where they have never had encouragement in their entire lives. So I want to teach a class 
that encourages them that, to make goals and uh, that gives examples of heroes like my heroes, Nelson Mandela, uh, Gandhi, um, Stephen Lewis, any, give, give, them, give them someone to, to look up to because most of them don't have that kind of person in their life. These are the ones in rural Africa who are going to change the world. Once they are given this, there's so many minds here that are just left without the opportunity to do anything further. But once they are given that chance, these are the ones who are going to now change their lives around. Africa relies so much on international aid right now, but that's not the way they want to be. They want to be helping themselves. So they just need a little push first. Once we give these rural kids the chance to add a proper education, then these are the ones who are going to cure AIDS and malaria and tuberculosis. These are the ones who are going to stop uh, civil war and and corruption in so many African countries. These are the ones. So ultimately it affects the entire world, this project. Makimba is eagerly awaiting the arrival of the school and not just for his children. Because our children now they will learn, they will go further. So education now to come, even we, I'm, me I'm speaking here, I'll be back to school again because I I only entered in grade 7. So although I'm speaking English, because the, the school which we are in at that time, it was uh, good. Now, if that school will finish, even me, even my wife, will go back to school again. Some of them maybe will come from uh, Copper Belt, some they will come from Wapua, some they will come from Eastern Province. They will come, which means it will not develop only the Sores East constituents, no. It will, it, will, it will bring develop to all entire Zambians. With a new high school in the wings, which will be free of costs, the students at the trade school in Kitwe are looking forward to the choices they will have. I want to go back to school then. I want to continue from grade 9 yeah, up to grade 12. Because of, because of money, I felt continue going to school, yeah. So that's why I am here for doing some, some, of, some skills. So after that school finished, I'll go up there and I'll encourage my sister to go to school and even my daughter. I need to finish my school. 15-year-old Modrine of Kibambomeni also aspires to be a doctor one day. And like many of the villagers, she has dreams of visiting Canada, hoping to greet and thank some Canadians personally. <laughs> Feeling the pressure of missing too much school and unable to afford the fees, Lawrence recently left Kibambomeni to attend the trade school in Kitwe. Lawrence may not see it or feel it, but there is a great weight on his shoulders. At just 17 years old, he is one of the brightest young minds from this area. He knows the importance of an education, and if he takes the right steps, one day he could become one of the heroes these people need. It's late on the Sunday afternoon, and there's a buzz around the village. The children run, to their church. The local choir is preparing a concert to welcome a new Canadian visitor. They sing and dance and bang on the drums in the dusty church until nearly sunset. They sing like they have hope. They sing like their voices carry for miles, 
and the world knows their names. I love the determination that those volunteers have to make a difference. That must be such a great feeling to have such a positive influence in someone's life. So hopefully this episode inspires you to go help somebody, your community, your church. Trust me, you'll feel good about it. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back with more great films. Welcome back to Faith Film Festival. We have time for one more film called The Promised Land by Helene Leff and Jacqueline Harvey. Let's take a look. Till it died like all those left on the vine Stems from hope and thorns of pride The blossoms fall by her side They fall by her side Lord, please help me understand this. Honey, I had such a good time tonight. Rapper, what's wrong? What is it? Look, I, I don't know how else to say this to you. But I want a divorce. What? You heard me. But I want a divorce. Am I speaking French? Why don't you go on by the time I get back here tomorrow? Rapper, wait! I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. How marvelous. The timing could not be better. I love you too, sweetheart. I'll be home soon. I've stopped in the diner up the road. Mother told me she and father have plans. Dinner alone. I know. I'll fill you in later. Thank you, my love. Are you planning on eating? Yes. Well, the kitchen's closed. 
Well, how about something from the case? I guess I could get you a pizza cake. Great. What kind of cake do you have? Chocolate, lemon, and butter. Chocolate. Is the coffee fresh? Yes. Good. Coffee and a big piece of chocolate cake. Those are so pretty, he must really love you. I bought those for myself. Oh. Are you new? I don't remember seeing you here the last time I came to town. Well, I guess I'm new then. You guess? I'm new, all right, except when I woke up this morning, I realized I was a year late for work. is divine. It tastes just like my Oma used to make. That's what I call my grandmother. Miss, I'm closing in two minutes. Well, forgive me for being so talkative. I'm not usually like this. It's just that I'm so elated. I just landed a spectacular deal. I work as an interior designer. Hello? Hello, Promise Diner. Hello? Hello, Bradford? Hello? Hello, hello. Hey, you come through? I was just wondering, uh, when y'all close tonight? Right now. That's partly why I purchased the flowers. Just when you assume things are falling apart, life hands you a delightful gift. Yep. Wrapped up in a big old bowl. Wait! What are you doing? I'm not done yes, yet! Yes, you are. I'm officially closed. Okay, fine. As I was saying before, sometimes we feel our world is on the verge of crumbling. I did for a moment. I came home surmising my parents might be different. Excited to see me. But when I arrived, I found that everything has remained status quo. My visits are meaningless to them. My mother's still her selfish self. She treats me more like an acquaintance than her daughter. But just like the mastery of an athlete when she gets into position, her body takes on a specific form. Moving a few steps back, the javelin is held horizontally in her hand by her head. Keeping her shoulders straight, she plants with her left foot sideways towards the sector lines. You see, this keeps her from crossing her body. Holding her eyes straight ahead, she aggressively, especially on count three, separates her hips and shoulders and holds palm up like so. And when she proceeds to cast the javelin with the utmost precision, that beauty goes sailing into the air. That's how I envision myself when I have a care, a burden, or a setback. I cast it off just like that. You do? Yes, I do. 
Once it's in the air, it's not mine anymore. I'm not allowed to think about it ever again. Does it work? When you believe there's someone greater than yourself in control, it does. I give Bradford to you. Well, that film reminds us that we should always try and keep a positive attitude, even if you're going through a hard time. Well, that's all for today's show. Make sure to visit our website and don't forget to get your tickets to this year's screening. You know I'll be there and I'm looking forward to meeting you fellow film buffs. And make sure to go and vote on your favorite films. Well, that's all for today's show. I'll see you next time on another episode of Faith Film Festival.